there's some things going on here in Indiana that uh, I'm sure people are generally unaware of. A year and a half to two years ago, we started being contacted by FEMA saying, you've got to put some plans together. We were to put together a plan to vaccinate every person in the county within 48 hours. You're kidding me. Wow. And then that plan has to be practiced two or three times. I mean, literally, we've we've gotten every police officer we can and buses and 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 uh, uh, volunteers and and set it up. And you know, then the sheriff's department started getting long questionnaires. I got one myself. I didn't fill it out, but and lots of questions. Of, you know, what kind of resources do we have? What kind of uh, how many officers? Uh, what can we handle? What are you going to do if if Chicago has an emergency and you have uh, uh, 400,000 people heading into your county? Um, uh, where can you put mass graves? We need to know spaces and mass graves. Can you? How many can you handle? Can you handle bodies from surrounding counties and those types of things? And we're going, what the heck? Are you guys talking about? You know, tell us what's going on. Hold up, and nothing's going on. We're just, just contingency plans. If, if something ever happens, you know, we just really need to, to know how to handle things. And then I, I was contacted by Homeland Security through our. What they've got, what we have to do is have what is called a hazard mitigation plan. All right. Well, that sounds good. And and what they're saying is FEMA is saying that that disasters are costing them too much money so we've got to have a plan to mitigate the the damage from disasters if a disaster ever happens i see some kind of search and rescue on the black and some of those vests Moving my load off of my trailer right now. Once I start to pull around, maybe I can get another shot from a different angle. Couldn't see all of this stuff from my former position. See civilians dressed with army haircuts, so they are army personnel. Two Marines earlier, but I think it's just us that's running this. Cool. Um, so, what, so what exactly are you guys here for? Like, what's the what's the uh, main reason? That so we're right here. Yeah. Um, traffic control. Traffic control. Uh, they're they're wanting to switch the flow of traffic from that way to this way. Whole ice water is free. Go cross the ice civilian traffic out of the uh, other city. Uh, we're the Army National Guard. We cover stuff inside the, the nation. 
Uh, like, that was an emergency. Uh, do you know when to stop just being um, emergencies? You know, it's it's events. for anything. Uh, public events where local police departments don't have the manpower to cover. Uh, no, if you were uh, uh, by one of your commanders to do something like that, uh, I was thinking about it. Do something like what? Like, Explain. Uh, do like house to house confiscations of weapons, like, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, if, it was, if it was in Iraq or Afghanistan, I mean, it's a combat zone, you know. Right, but what if it was here? They wouldn't have no reason to make another like that. Right down to the actual pepper spray and live tasers. These guardsmen don't know what to expect, while most in the crowd pelt them with eggs and bottles. Ryan Levesque pretends he's just an innocent onlooker. Eventually, though, he unsuccessfully attempts to break through the defense. The whole time they thought I was a student here and I jumped that fence they find out I'm on four and they're gonna be pretty pretty upset in this drill the troubles created by people showing up without proper ID or living outside the designated vaccination area all potential real-life scenarios ultimately the guard makes many arrests and is forced to shut this vaccination site down hopefully not real at all um, but we will train just in case we are caught up for something to happen. Now, they say this is not to suggest this is how they expect Mainers to react. But the bottom line, they say, these troops need to be prepared for anything. In Paris, Steve Minnick, News 8. Giving away any personal information or anything that would uh, affect you in any way, shape, or form, if you could just uh, tell these guys whatever it is you wish to tell them about the training that you received in Kentucky, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, the training we received was, um, you know, a lot of it was, it was uh, seemed like standard National Guard training, but uh, others, uh, they're really intent on training up on this stuff in a serious way. And um, uh, we received, of course, riot control, which is pretty standard. But we also uh, trained up on, um, you know, traffic control points, cordoning off a city, like a small town setting up a perimeter around the town and going into the town and locking it down and securing the town and uh, rounding up any uh, anybody who might be, you know, a threat right. as what would, would be perceived as by the command. So let me stop you right there and say this. You brought this up earlier, which is a good point. The National Guard has a way around the uh, 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 Posse Comitatus Act in regards to it not being against our Constitution to help police the streets, and why is that? Well, the way the National Guard works is that they uh, they work in unison with local law enforcement, and the National Guard can go in and detain somebody, but detain is not technically arresting; is uh, is holding them uh, until it's justified uh, whether they should be arrested or released. And the local law enforcement actually comes up, takes the person, and they do the official arrest. They're literally telling me that they want to harden our fire stations. Right, what do you mean by that? Well, you know how when a, uh, a 747 hits, here's what he said today, when a 747 hits a nuclear reactor and just, and just slides off of it, that kind of hardening we're talking about. What the heck? <laughs>